Are there diminishing returns on doing this, this style of sort of heavy looking up, engaging, pausing, puzzling through the language? Because assuming somebody doesn't get tired of doing this kind of immersion, is it more beneficial to only do this over free flow, um, which is when you're not doing this sort of intensive um, time with the language? Um, if if there are diminishing returns, so if it's it's better to not just do this, what is a good balance who for somebody who might favor that style of intensive lookups and understanding more? Yeah, I wouldn't say that there's diminishing returns per se, but I do think that you miss out on part of the learning experience um, and part of the skill set. So uh, one of the things that um, a lot of learners do is when they get into content that's too difficult, they just look everything up and it uh, breaks their flow. Um, and they are relying very heavily on the tools. At a certain point, you have to switch over to not relying on the tools so that your brain can actually do the work of making the connections. So. The first time you read a novel uh, without tools, one of the things, or my experience was, I was often uh, you know, encountering things that I didn't understand. And I would sit and puzzle through it and think about it. And then if I couldn't get in a few seconds, I would you know, keep reading. But oftentimes what ends up happening is the first time you read it, doesn't make any sense. And if I were doing interactive or intensive immersion, I would be looking things up in order to like make sense of it. But if I let myself really puzzle it out and let myself be confused for a bit, and my brain goes that extra 50% to actually do the work, suddenly there's a moment of clarity and everything makes sense. And so the concern if you only did intensive immersion is that you wouldn't actually take that last step to making the mental connections, the final mental connections without the support of the tools that your brain needs to in order to start building the automatic understanding of the language. Um, so, the concern is the language will always be more of a conscious process where you are thinking heavily about it. Right. And we're trying to turn it into a subconscious process where you are understanding things immediately um, without thinking about it at all. And in order to make that happen, you have to expose yourself to situations where the only information that you have available to you is your brain and what's in your brain and nothing outside of that. Um, I think that you know, the more stuff that you know on the conscious understanding side where you have taken the time to break the language down, the more benefit you get out of the uh, free flow uh, where you do embed things in your subconscious. But the more things that you embed your subconscious, the easier it is to do the intensive uh, where you are reaching beyond your current abilities and learning new things. So it becomes this virtuous cycle where they build on each other. Yeah, I sort of, I like to think of it, it as the as you do more free flow, that stuff that you have then learned in the intensive sets in so that you no longer have to focus on that. And you can start going for things that are further and further and further out because that stuff that is sort of behind you has gotten stronger and stronger and more automatics so that you don't even notice it anymore. You just notice those new things. You just notice the more subtle bits, the more nuance or whatever it might be. Yeah, I remember going back to when Matt and I were originally writing the guide, um, so Matt was effectively teaching me how to do all of this. Mm -hmm. And the concept of free flow just didn't really make sense to me. I was very much more of like, I need to do intensive. It's the only thing I really enjoy doing. It feels like work and it feels like I'm making progress. And so I was investing pretty heavily in that and not doing as much free flow. Um, because when I did free flow, I like didn't understand things and that felt bad. Um, and so what I ended up doing was I would do intensive during the week. Uh, to you know, expand my abilities because it was sort of aligned with my work. I could just like tack it on to the end of the workday, and then on weekends I would just like binge watch stuff, um, and uh, or binge listen to things, and not really worry about it, just like do the free flow. And almost immediately I realized that my understanding of things on Monday after a weekend of binging free flow was su way superior to what I had on Friday. Uh, even though I had done all this work throughout the week, um, I feel like I, all of that work cemented and became subconscious or, or more automatic uh, and more easy to understand after a weekend of, of binge watching. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the first time that I personally noticed the value of free flow. And so what do you think is a good balance between the two? Um, it really depends on where you are in the process. You know, at right. a certain point, everything becomes free flow. Um, it, once you know everything or you know 98% of it, basically everything becomes free flow. So it, it, intensive naturally converts into that. Um, and at a certain point you are doing, you know, 50, uh, 
80% free flow. In the earlier phases, I think it's more beneficial to do intensive. Um, that being said, some people hate it. And so it's, uh, you should find the thing that actually is going to keep you engaged as long as you're doing a good balance of both. Um, so basically say, start with 50-50 and then lean towards the one that is more um, comfortable and interesting to you. Um, also feel, feel free to change it up over time. Um, if, if they're going to start with 50, 50, and then find a balance, what, where is like the maximum that you think they should strive for? So like 80, 20, okay. Or should you aim closer to like 60, 40, 70, 30, like say 75, 25 is probably the max that I would go. Yeah. Yeah. Cool.